about money. He is listening to you when you are talking about money. Books were brought out not as they were praying, as they were talking. Listen to this. <laughs> Listen to this. There is a language that you have to develop that will cause money not to fly away from you. There are deliberations, there are discussions that will cause money to like you. Money will be so desperate to have you. So we talk against it, we attack prosperity day in, day out, and people are criticizing money. And then they begin to pray for their own prosperity. And yet it is already recorded. So that prayer becomes a wrong prayer. What have you been saying? Ah. Do you know that if you see people that are criticizing healing, they are criticizing healing just because they are not yet sick. And the devil will help them to criticize it knowing that two weeks from now they will be sick. They will be so in need of it to a point where even if they pray for the healing, what they have said is much more powerful than the prayer that they are now doing. The devil helps you to attack it, criticize it, knowing that next year, September, you will be in need of that healing power. So he pushes you into that exercise. You are so busy talking against it, writing about it, and criticizing the healing power of God. And the devil knows that next year you should have cancer. He knows that. So you have to be in a, on, in a project where you have to work against the prayers that you begin to do next year. As you are talking, books are being written. It is, it is now known in heaven that you are not in need of any healing whatsoever. That's when you see a person coming now staggering and ministering to that kind of a person. It's a burden. The man is just loaded. There are files and books and libraries in heaven. He has said so much. Again, it's the same power. So... Watch what you say. Don't talk, never talk against the man. If you have done so, confess. <laughs> you have sinned against prosperity. You have sinned against God's provision. It is not wrong to prosper. It is not demonic. It is not devilish. It is not satanic. It is godly. We are missing witnesses. People that have seen poverty and it has worked for them. They are not willing to come out to defend poverty and to explain to us why lack can be a blessing to people or to a nation. What one blessing, do, tell me one thing that you can benefit from poverty. Why do we have people advocating for it? We have ministers, people that are committed, they are defending poverty. They only defend it by what they are saying, but what they are doing from Monday up to Saturday, they are working against poverty. They go to work. Every time if they are given a salary, they, they take it. And they know that that salary is fighting against poverty, but they still take it. And they begin to talk against it. You have to develop your own different culture where you know that the provisions of God are not to be insulted. If money was evil, 
God would have never spoken anything about it. But if you see the Lord coming to you and demanding 10% of something that is evil, what are you talking about? Why would God want to partake of the same evil thing that all of us are pursuing every day? It's not evil. Especially if it is gotten by you. It can't be evil at all. It can't be. So be careful as you begin to pray what you say it has to be consistent. I'm not going to give you a list. I'm, going to, I'm not going to give you examples of prayer that you can do. But all I'm saying is pray the word of God. Pray the word of God. presence of the Lord. We are going to have just 14, um, we are going to just to have 14 days uh, of prayer and today we have done day one of prayer and fasting. So I believe that many of you, we shall be connected and many of you, you shall be joined in because something definitely is about to happen in your own personal life and in the lives of people that are connected to you. We are going to be engaging into some prayers. The first prayer that we are going to be praying about is the prayer of restoration. The Bible speaks about it. If you read the Bible in the book of Psalm um, 23, if you read Psalm 23 and uh, verse uh, 3, the Bible says something like this. He said, He restoreth my soul. Um, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He restoreth my soul. We have been affected. We have been actually disturbed by too many things and our souls need some restoration. So the Bible is saying he restoreth my soul. So we are going to engage into some prayers right now and I believe that the Lord is going to touch each and every one of us. Whatever that has been disturbed in our system, whatever that, that has been affected in our lives, the Lord that we serve is going to restore them in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want us to get into prayer and say, Lord, thank you for the gift of life. We come before you, Lord, the restorer of our soul. Accept our prayers in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the restorer of our souls. He is the one that is able to do it for us. Some people were emotionally drained. Some people were heartbroken. Some people were disturbed by too many things. But we are praying to the God who is the restorer of souls. He is the one that can restore your psychology psychological part. Many of you were affected psychologically. Many of you were affected by people around you. Many of you were distressed. Many of you entered into too many depressions. But I pray that the restorer of the soul shall encounter you today. I pray that the restorer of the soul shall touch your life today. Many of you, you were left stranded. Many of you, you were disappointed. Many of you, you were frustrated. But as I pray right now for the restorer of soul to touch your life, he shall do it for you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is something that is about to happen in your own personal life. There is something that is about to change in your own personal life. Because we serve the mighty God, the one who sees where no man can see. The one who can touch you where you cannot touch yourself. He is a mighty God. You cannot actually minister to your soul alone. You need the restorer of the soul. In this coming 30 minutes, as we are engaging into prayer, something is about to change in your life and something will actually transform you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Debbie, you are saying is today the first day of prayer and fasting. Yes, we have started today. We are just doing our 14 days and we'll be meeting here every day uh, for 30 minutes at 8 p.m. I believe and I understand that many things are going to change. Day one, which is today, we are going to engage much into the prayer of self. The spirit that is inside of you has to be changed. There is something that needs to change inside of you. There is something that we are about to pray for and there is something that we are going to touch in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to give you a scripture and then we get into other prayers. I want to, to, to I want you to watch this uh, scripture here. It says in Exodus chapter 31 and verse 3, And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, in all manner of workmanship. There is a spirit that you need in your life. It is called the Spirit of God. When that spirit is upon you, there are many things that you are able to do. You don't need to practice them. You end up knowing them. You don't need to go to school for them. You end up knowing them. There is a spirit that the Lord, that the Spirit of God, when it, when it comes upon you, my goodness, may you be baptized with the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. The Spirit of wisdom will also follow you. The Spirit of understanding will fall upon you. The Spirit of knowledge will also fall upon you. The Spirit of all manner of workmanship will fall upon you. You shall not be stranded in your life because that spirit will fall upon you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, baptize me. Oh Lord, baptize me with the spirit of understanding. Baptize me with the spirit of knowledge. Baptize me. Oh Lord, today, this hour, I want you to pray right now wherever you are. Let the spirit of the Lord baptize you. Let the spirit of God baptize you. Let it fall upon you right now. Be filled with the spirit of God. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Be filled with the Spirit of God in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There shall be understanding in your life. There shall be all manner. There shall be all manner of wisdom that will be flowing north, east, west, and south in your life. You shall be able to deal with at your company. You shall be able to deal with people at your company. You shall be able to deal with people in your career. You shall be able to deal with people. Why? Because the spirit of understanding will, will fall upon you. Let God baptize you this hour. Let God baptize you this hour. In this 30 minutes, may this spirit fill you. In this 30 minutes, may gande brusco dia la kasheketem the spirit of understanding will always make you to be outstanding. The spirit of understanding will always make you to be outstanding. Listen to me. Wisdom is profitable to direct. Every time you get wisdom and you know how to apply it everywhere you go, it will make you to be outstanding. Why? Because the spirit of the Lord will be upon you. Listen, this, when the spirit of God is upon you, there are many things that will be happening around your life in all areas of your life. Lord, fill me with wisdom, knowledge and understanding in all areas of my life. You need wisdom. You need understanding. You need that spirit of God to baptize you this hour in all areas of your life. You don't need to lack in every area. You need to understand that when you have wisdom you remain outstanding. There is something that is about to happen in your life. Aida Belay, you are saying the spirit of God in wisdom. Amen. Uh, Esther, you are saying, Amen. Hallelujah. I receive. I receive it now. Receive that spirit. Receive that spirit of understanding in the name of Jesus. Receive the spirit of wisdom in the name of Jesus. Listen. People will look for you. You don't need to look for people. People will look for you. Why? Because the Bible says the gift of a man maketh room for him and it makes them to sit with kings. There is, a, there is this spirit when it comes upon you, people will look after you. People will look for you wherever you can be. They will try to get hold of you. Listen to me. Solomon was having wisdom. Kings used to travel from where they used to stay going to see him not empty-handed they were going to see solomon loaded i see you this year 2021 people will be looking for you they shall not only look for you empty-handed they shall look for you with all manner of presence because something will change my spirit that's another prayer my spirit hear my voice my spirit hear my voice hear the voice of the lord obey the voice of the lord in the name of jesus
My spirit, hear my voice. Obey the voice of the Lord, God Almighty, for direction. Your spirit has to listen to the voice of God. Your spirit does not need to listen to ancestral voices. Your spirit does not li- need to listen to voices of de- uh, of demonic altars. Your, your, your spirit must not listen to any voice that is contrary to the will of God. I want you to speak to your spirit. Say to your spirit, my spirit, hear the voice of the Lord. Hear Hear the voice of God for divine direction. Hear the voice of God. My spirit, I know you are hearing my voice. As you hear my voice, I command you today. Hear the voice of the Lord. Close your ears to any demonic voice. The Bible said Jesus was telling them and he said, my sheep hears my voice. Hmm. Not with an ordinary ear alone, but with the inside spirit. That, That the inside, the spirit inside must hear the voice of God. Even when you are sleeping, when God speaks to you, you must hear that this is God. You must understand that this is God. And you just say, hear my Lord. Oh my goodness. Samuel was sleeping. Eli was sleeping. Eli could not hear the voice of the Lord. But the young boy Samuel was hearing the voice of the Lord. Because God did not speak to these ears. God spoke to his spirit. So I want you to understand this. When you tell your spirit to hear the voice of the Lord, you are trained training your spirit the way you want your spirit to operate. Right now as we pray, no demonic altar, no satanic altar will call upon your name and you will appear there. No ways. You shall not appear on any satanic altar. You shall not appear on any demonic mirror. You shall never appear in any shrine of any witchcraft doctor. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of the Lord will be upon you. Your spirit will be trained by the spirit of God to hear the voice of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, my spirit, hear the voice of God. My spirit, be attentive to the spirit of God. Many times God wants to speak to you, but the problem is we are not yet trained to hear from him. We are not yet trained to hear his voice. But when your spirit acknowledges the, the voice of God, you will be alert. You will know that this is, this is not an ordinary voice, but this is from God. When God spoke to Abraham, it entered into his spirit. Abraham, come out of your father's house. He did not need, he did not look for time to reason. He did not even try to think twice. He just followed what God has spoken. He just attended to the instruction that God had given. Why? Because he spoke directly to his spirit. When God speaks to your spirit, you can never forget the dreams that he gave you. You can never forget what he has told you. You can never actually move away from what he is telling you. Ah, I, I know that something has already happened in your spirit. Your spirit is actually hearing me right now as I'm talking to you. Spirit of God connect with our spirit. Spirit of God connect with our spirit. Your spirit functions like your like your outside body. Listen, it has got eyes, it has got ears, mouth, everything, every function that you have outside, your spirit has. So may your spiritual body be activated now in the name of Jesus. May it be active. God blessed us with all spiritual blessings and it takes a man of the spirit to access the things of the spirit. It takes a man of the spirit, listen to me. The Bible says those who worship him, will worship him in truth and in spirit. Why? Because God is spirit. So in other words, we cannot worship God in a carnal manner. We need to be spiritual. That is why we are commanding our spirit to hear the voice of the Lord, to know how to communicate to God, to know how to listen when God is speaking, because something will happen definitely in our lives. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, my spirit lead me, my spirit, my spirit lead me, be led by God's grace in all decisions in the name of Jesus Christ. In every decision that you make, let your spirit be led by the Spirit of God. Let the Spirit of God direct you. My spirit be led by God's Spirit. In all decisions and choices I make in Jesus' mighty name. In every decision this year, 2021, in all the choices in this year, 2021, may your spirit be guided by God. May your spirit be led by God. May your spirit be directed by the Spirit of God. It only takes a 
spirit to know a spirit. It takes a spirit to know a spirit. It takes a spirit to connect to a spirit. It takes a spirit to actually understand the way of the spirit. Therefore, my spirit, hear me right now. Be led by God. Follow him and understand him and actually make me to make right choices, right decisions at the right time in this year 2021. I am tired of regrets. I am tired of actually making wrong decisions, meeting wrong people you're going to be doing. Be led by the Spirit of God. Oh Lord, lead me. Oh Lord, let your Spirit lead me. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Spirit, you shall not be led by any demonic force, by any demonic entity. I shall be led by the Spirit of God. That is your prayer today. I shall be led by the Spirit of God. Mm, My goodness. This prayer is so effective. I want you to know this. When you speak to your soul, remember man is in three formats. We touched on your spirit. There is a soul inside of you. Remember we spoke about it and we say the restorer of soul. The soul is the psychological part of a person. This is where you are disturbed. This is where pride kicks in. This is where some things happen in your soul. So we want to pray right now. My soul, humble yourself and allow my spirit to take over. I destroy self and allow my spirit to guide me. Mm. We want to destroy self. Let your soul be weaker than your spirit. Oh my goodness. I repeat that. If your spirit is more stronger, you cannot be led by emotions. You cannot be led by self-interest, but you are led by the spirit. Let your spirit become stronger inside of you so that when you are walking and when you are talking, you don't talk like a carnal man. You talk like a man of the spirit or a woman of the spirit. I want you to understand this. I want everything that is inside of you to pray this prayer. My soul soul, humble yourself. My soul, humble yourself. My soul, humble yourself. Do you know one thing? If we don't humble our souls, pride will always rule in our lives. You will discover at a man called Moses, leading a nation, but humble. Meekness was upon him. He was having all things that you can imagine. The anointing was there. Authority was there. Power was there. He was talking to God face to face. But let me tell you something. He was still humble. That is what we want. His soul was humbled. There is a spirit of humility. Where does it abide? The spirit of humility does not abide in your mind. The spirit of humility abides in your soul. It make, it controls your soul. It makes your soul to be humble. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, therefore, in the name of Jesus, therefore, in the name of Jesus, my soul, humble yourself. Humble yourself and allow my spirit, the spirit of the Lord to take over. Allow my spirit to take over. Let my spirit, because remember, the spirit that is inside of you, God put that breath inside of you. That spirit was blown inside of you. That spirit is the one that makes you to have conscience. That spirit is the one that makes you to realize what is wrong and what is right. It is the one that picks it up. Your your, your soul is actually, uh, it can do anything. It can actually misbehave, but your spirit is always guiding you. So, my soul, humble yourself. I commit my thoughts and ways in, the, in God's hands. Your thoughts and your ways. Your thoughts and your ways. Remember, today we are praying about you. Don't worry about other warfare prayers. We will pray them later. But today we are praying about you. Because you need more prayers than anything else. You need more prayer than anyone else. You see, some of the things that we are crying about, some of the things that we are praying for, they normally come to us if we have prayed for ourselves first. Now listen to me. I want you to commit your thoughts and your ways into the hands of the Lord. I want you to commit your thoughts and your ways in the hands of the Lord. Lord, I commit my thoughts. I commit my ways this year, 2021, into your hands. Everything that I'm going to be doing in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, I commit it into your hands 
hands in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are the one who will be directing me. Therefore, I commit my plans into your hands. May my plans fall into your will. All our plans, oh Lord, may your may our plans fall into your will in the name of Jesus. As I am praying for your people, Lord, hear our prayers. Lord God Almighty, hear our prayers. We humble ourselves as we commit our thoughts, as we commit our ways, because our ways are not your ways. Our thoughts are not your thoughts. We are here, here on earth. We don't know where to go. We don't know what to do, but show us the way. The Bible says, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, we call unto you. We don't have our own mind. We have the mind of Christ. Let that mind of Christ start to operate in our life. In the name of our Lord Jesus. In the powerful name of our Lord Jesus. Yes, something is about to happen and something has started happening already. Lord, touch my tongue with an anointing to know where to speak and where to be silent. You need your tongue to be trained. Hmm. You need your tongue to be trained. You need to know where to speak and where not to speak. There is an anointing that comes upon you. It's like a call of fire. When that anointing comes upon your tongue, you know where to speak and where not to speak. The Bible says, be quick to hear and slow to speak, which means there is something that our tongue can do. Sometimes we are angered by people. We release cases upon people in which you are a child of God. Sometimes you wish somebody you speak things that you're not supposed to speak and let me tell you something there is life and death that lies upon your tongue so every negative word that you have spoken upon yourself you need to reverse them anything that you have spoken negatively upon yourself that hey I'm a useless person reverse it today in the name of Jesus I want the Lord to touch your tongue I want the Lord to touch your tongue with an anointing to know where to speak and where to be silent. Almighty God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, teach my tongue. Oh my goodness. Train my tongue for war. Magli Lord, train my tongue to know where to speak and where not to speak. Train my tongue to know what to say at the right time. Train my tongue, oh Lord. I cannot, I don't know how to train it, but you are the Lord who created me and you have the manual of this tongue. You, you know very well how this tongue can operate and you know how to make it to operate. As I pray in the name of Jesus, the same God that I'm praying for is the same God that opened up the donkey's mouth to speak. You are the Lord that made the donkey to speak. The donkey of Balaam was able to speak because you touched the, the tongue of that donkey. Lord, allow me to speak. The Bible says you gave me the mouth of the lame head to speak to speak the word in season. To speak the word in season. Lord, I know you can do it. For each and every one of us, I know you can do it. Many times we have chased away people that wanted to help us. Many times we have spoken negatively upon our divine helpers. Many times, Magla Broshokotia Lakatan. What is Apostle Mapanda saying? I am saying to you, there was a man called Abraham. He entertained angels. He knew how to speak. He begged the angels to come to his house. The Bible says that when he was when he did that, he did not Actually, he just entertained visitors. It's all about the way you are speaking to them. They could have left, but it was the way he spoke to them. Even Lord, he saw the angels. He entertained angels. It was about the way he was speaking. The way you speak can calm storms. The way you speak can actually make things to be in order. Why? Because of your tongue. The tongue of Jesus when he spoke, peace be still, when the storm was there, the disciples said, what manner of man is this? Even his speech can make the storm to be calm. You can be like that. If your, if your tongue is trained, you can be like that. If your tongue is well trained, you can be like that. There are people who talk. They can talk. They can talk too much. At the end of the day, they don't even know where they started. They don't even know where they are going when they are talking. But I want you to practice this today. I want you to know this today, that your tongue can be trained. I don't have much time. I'm left with a minute. I want you to know this. There is something definitely that is going to be happening. When God touches your tongue, when the Lord touches your tongue, something is about to happen. You will speak a word. My goodness. Psalm 107 verse 20, the Bible says, He sent forth His word. It's a trained tongue. 
He sent forth his word and it healed them and it delivered them from their destruction. What is it that your tongue is trained to do? Some people's tongues are trained for healing. If they speak healing, healing comes. If they speak um, prosperity, prosperity comes because their tongue is trained. You need your tongue to be trained, not only for gossip. You need your tongue to be trained so that when you speak a word, something definitely happens. I can see here Materere, uh, Materere, Emilda is saying, thank you Jesus for this prayer point of the tongue. Definitely it is powerful. Definitely it is powerful. Nesta, you're saying, God touch my tongue. Nesta, you're saying, oh yes, help us Lord. Uh, Esther, you're saying, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Boniwe Mapele, you're saying, hallelujah. Uh, Esther Koza, you're saying, amen. Um, that is it. I want you to understand something because God is about to do something in your spirit today. Restore my mind, O oh Lord. Let the mind of Christ be upon me now in the name of Jesus. We need a mind restoration. Remember, there's a renewal of the mind. Maybe your mind was renewed before, but there was a problem and your mind was, was affected. Many Christians have been affected. By the year 2020, many people were affected. This year, 2021, what do we need? Restoration of the mind. We still need the mind of Christ. I want to pray for you right now, wherever you are. May your mind be restored. May your mind be restored. You have a sound mind. The mind of fear is not your portion. The mind of fear is not your portion. You have a sound mind. May that sound mind speak into your life. May that sound mind speak into your life. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, the same God that created us in his own image, we call unto him. The same God that did not give us a spirit of fear, but who gave us a sound mind. I pray in the name of Jesus. Let that sound mind start to operate in our lives. Let that restore, restoration start to operate in our mind. Lord, rebuke fear out of our mind. Rebuke selfishness in our mind. Lord, in the name of Jesus, remove pride out of our minds. Remove everything that is not of God in our minds. As I pray right now, let the anointing of God start to speak. As I pray right now, let the power of God minister into everyone watching me right now. Those who are listening to me right now, joining me in prayer, let the fire of God destroy every hand of the enemy that touched your head when you're still young. Anything that affected your mind, when whether in the dream, in the physical, I command it right now to be uprooted in the name of Jesus. Any seed the enemy planted in your mind, let it be uprooted today in the name of Jesus. Any tree the Lord did not plant in your mind, may it be uprooted today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Ancient of Days. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Um, Kelmas, uh, I think that's your name, uh, Kelmas Mia, you're saying, that's my everyday prayer I receive. Aida, you're saying, thank you, Jesus, for powerful prayer. Manasa Dube, you're saying, man of God, I receive. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, the enemy can come and drop something in your mind. Just a word. Just a word. Ta! Just a drop. Ta! When that thing is inside your head and you entertain it, it grows. And then you discover now, oh my goodness, we are coming out of this prayer and you are charged and you are powerful and you are saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The enemy will come and say, you, can you do it? That statement alone can actually be poison to your mind. Your mind is a sound mind. It does not know fear. Your, your mind is a sound mind. It does not know fear. It is a sound mind. It is the mind of Christ. It can actually see the impossibilities as possible. Everything that other people can say, it is impossible. Your mind of Christ that you are carrying will come and say with God, all things are possible. So people of God, I believe many of you are blessed. I know that something has happened already. Something has happened already. Remember, today we are touching. I think this coming three days we are touching only on your spirit man. We want our spirit man to change. There is something about our spirit man. We, are, we don't have an ordinary spirit. Our spirit is the spirit of God inside of us. That is why we say greater is he that is in me than the one that is in the world which are, which which means that 
there is something greater inside of you. There's a spirit of God inside of you. So people of God, my 30 minutes is up already. I believe you were all blessed and I believe that the Lord is going to bless you and touch every area of your life. I know that something great is about to happen in your own personal life. I know that something powerful is about to happen in your personal life. Let us meet again tomorrow at the same time at 8 p.m. for prayers because every day at 8 p.m. to 8.30 we shall be engaging in prayers and I believe that the Lord will bless us indeed. Continue to pray those prayer points. Go through them again and again. Pray with them. Thank you for joining us, everybody that was here. Kandapo, you are saying thank you, uh, Jesus, for the healing power. Esther, you are saying amen. Kediboni Musebi, my daughter, how are you? You are saying thank you, Lord. Um, Esther is saying, the devil is a liar. Esther is saying, I am blessed. Aida, you are saying, shalom, 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 men of God. God bless you, people of God. Uh, I pray and I believe that the Lord will touch each and every area of your life effectively and powerfully in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let me sign out. My name is Apostle Emma Panda. Jesus is Lord. As children of God, our fight should be over one thing, which is territory. And that's what the devil is after again. He wants space. He wants a territory. Why? Because he doesn't have any. Even places that we think belong to the devil. Somebody, a human being, a child of God, handed over that place to the devil. Not God. The devil is so desperate for space. The reason why he fell from heaven it wasn't because they discovered the secret in his pocket he wanted space he wanted to be above the stars above the mountains he's fighting for space even when he was thrown down to earth it doesn't mean that earth was given to him he was thrown down that's not how you give a gift to somebody he was cast down from heaven doesn't mean that he was given earth but when he was down here there was a man now who was then created by God to be in charge and to be in control and to dominate the space called earth and it was that man who gave space to the devil. The reason why Adam was placed in the garden by God, God wanted him to guard it. Guard it. Protect the garden. From who? The devil had already fallen. The enemy was already around. Desperately looking for space. And God gave Adam power to protect the garden. Because that's the only place where order was concentrated. And God knew that the devil, when he sees order, he wants a, a space. He wants to get into your life today because there is so much order. Not because you are wicked. Not because you are evil. Not because you are disorganized because you are the most orderly person that he has ever met and because you represent the garden the garden represents order a snake was found in the garden 
there was a snake. There were no two snakes in the garden. It wasn't ten snakes in the garden. It was just one snake. You don't need a lot of enemies. You just need one snake. One snake in your life that you don't deal with properly will bring pain into your life. One snake can make you lose your garden. You don't need too many people talking to you. Just one wrong voice. One snake is enough. You give space to that one serpent your good life becomes a miserable life. One friend, one relative, one boyfriend, one serpent, you can lose your garden. Space given to you by God must be protected not by God but by you. God was busy in heaven. Prophetically, he could see the devil sneaking into the garden, but he never stopped him. And when the conversation between the serpent and the woman was going on, God did not interrupt that conversation because it is never his responsibility to protect your space. Your space must be protected by you. 